Asteroid City. In a retro-modern form of the 1950s, a TV hub presents a live creation of Space Rock City, a play in the film setting by renowned dramatist Conrad Erb. In the play, a young cosmology show is held in the made-up desert town of Space Rock City. The play's occasions are portrayed in widescreen and adapted variety, while the TV extraordinary is found in highly contrasting institute proportioned eye in the play, where photojournalist Augie Steinbeck shows up sooner than expected to the lesser stargazer show with Woodrow, his scholarly high school child, and his three more youthful little girls. At the point when their vehicle stalls, Augie telephones his father by marriage, Stanley, asking his assistance. Stanley, who disdains his child in regulation, convinces him to enlighten the kids regarding their mom's new demise, which Augie had hidden. Augie and Woodrow meet Midge Campbell, a well-known yet world-tired entertainer, and her little girl Dinah, who, as Woodrow, will be respected at the show. Augie and Midge, and Woodrow and Dinah, steadily experience passionate feelings for all through the play. The other show members show up, five-star General Griff Gibson, cosmologist Dr. Hickenlooper, three extra teenaged honorees, Ricky, Clifford, and Shelley, and their folks, JJ, Roger, and Sandy, a busload of primary younger students escorted by youthful instructor June Douglas, and a rancher band drove by vocalist Montana. A neighborhood in Gives Everybody's Facilities, Gibson invites the participants at the Space Rock City Hall where the youngsters are to get grants for different innovations. A UFO out of nowhere shows up over the cavity, an outsider arises and takes a part of the shooting star that made the hole. Augie photos the outsider. General Gibson with directions from the president puts the town under military quarantine and everybody is exposed to clinical and mental assessments. In the interim, a sentiment blooms among Montana and June, who guarantee the understudies that the outsider is logical serene. The stargazer Honor Rees used Dr. Hickenlooper's hardware to endeavor to contact the outsider. Utilizing a watched pay telephone, Ricky calls his school paper to hand off the quarantine subtleties and conceal to the rest of the world the Space Rock City occasions become public news. An irate General Gibson is going to end the quarantine when the UFO returns and the outsider returns the shooting star section. At the point when Gibson re-establishes the quarantine, the youngsters, researchers, and guardians revolt, utilizing the honorees' innovations to overwhelm the military, the play's creation is sprinkled between the play. Sometime after Conrad Earp began composing, he meets with entertainer Jones Corridor, who plays out a tryout in Earp's home and is promptly projected. During a similar cooperation, Earp and Lobby kiss, laying out their relationship as darlings. Herp composes the play with assistance from a nearby acting school and enrolls most cast individuals from it, including Mercedes Portage, a touchy yet skilled entertainer who plays Midge, during the recorded presentation of the play, Lobby, who plays Augie, goes up against the play's chief Schubert Green, saying he actually doesn't figure out the play, and inquires as to whether he is doing him right. Green advises Corridor to continue to play Augie the same way regardless of being unsure, and that he is doing him right. After that collaboration, while taking a smoke break on a gallery, Lobby runs into the entertainer who was cast to play Augie's better half before her main scene was cut. She discusses the erased scene's text to him. A half year into the play's run, Conrad Erb passes on in an auto collision. In the play's epilogue, Augie and his family are the last to leave Space Rock City after Broad Gibson lifts the quarantine. Augie's girls cover their mom's remains in the desert, Woodrow wins the cooperation financing, and Midge leaves Augie her street number. Augie and his family unobtrusively drive away.